I don't really believe that there's within reason a thing of too many emails, right? Like if you're sending an email a day, it's probably too much. But I mean, for myself, I would say we send out like, geez, 10 to 14 emails a month, you know? And it's a lot of emails, but they're, this is gonna tie into the last thing, but they're segmented out and they're not all just like buy, 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 stream, stream, stream. There's a lot of like, hey, here's a new video. I, we did this, here's a backstory on it. Or like, yo, this is crazy. Or hey, this is the cool thing's happening. Or like thought you'd like to know this. So it's a mix. So that's where when we say don't let your email list go cold, it's not just send emails. It's send different types of emails, provide value to your fans. So that when you do need something, it's not gonna fall on deaf ears. You are now listening to the Creative Juice Podcast brought to you by Entrepreneur.io. What's up, Indies? Welcome back to Creative Juice. This is episode 189. I'm your co-host, Jack McCarthy. Stoked to be here with you today. Uh, We've got a really, really exciting episode planned out here. Uh, with me, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Ed Isola. Ed, what's up, brother? I am having, and I told Jack this before we started recording, a great day. So I'm energized and I'm very also excited about this topic. So probably going to have a lot of very insightful and exciting things to say today for y'all. Just tell our listeners real quick about some of the stuff that uh, that's happening on this beautiful Tuesday <laughs> for you. I, I, mar- marketing firing on all fronts for the 502s. Yeah, it's a, it's a good day um, when your marketing work is working like everything's working, you know. Um, we launched a free plus shipping and handling funnel today that so far has, I think, spent $30 and made back about 150 or 60 So that's crushing it. We had a TikTok go viral this morning, um, which has at this moment over 500,000 views on it. And that has like seeped into... Um, our Spotify stream numbers, which at one point we had 400 people listening to our Spotify uh, at one moment today. And then I built out last night and launched this morning a bunch of Spotify testing ads um, that probably down the line we'll bring to you guys and report on. So just a good day across the board with a lot of kind of exploration and positive results so far that they're amping me up, man. I'm very excited about it. Hell yeah, dude. I'm stoked. Um, We'll have to, I'll I'll link in the show notes in case any of you guys missed this and you're listening, uh, maybe for the first time or you're catching back up. We did an episode a couple weeks ago where we went over some of the IG Reels stuff, uh, IG Reels ad stuff that we were testing out. And uh, the video in particular that Ed is talking about on TikTok, the one that went viral today, actually is the same one that he was using in, uh, in these IG Reels campaigns. So Kind of a, a nice little throwback there too. Um, we'll make sure we link to that because uh, IG Reels ads are dope. Um, <laughs> so if you guys aren't using them, um, you should be. But yeah, I'm pumped about this topic today too, man. Um, last week, obviously, we had Jesse on to talk about talking to your fans online, and one of the big things that we sort of covered in that is you know how to be communicative and open and vulnerable. Uh, in a way that feels authentic to you, to your fans in email. So we thought it would be cool to dig into some, kind of go the opposite end of the (laughs) spectrum here and talk about some of the big mistakes that we see artists making uh, with email marketing. And uh, this is a fun one. You know, we we work with a lot of artists at IndieX and we get to audit a lot of email marketing, see the things that people have been working on uh, and, you know, try to fill the, fill the gaps for them and find ways that they could be doing it better Um, in all pieces of their marketing, but email marketing, especially um, because that's often the place where you're communicating with people who are on the verge of becoming a customer or have become a customer and are ready to be a repeat customer. Um, So that's a lot of the stuff that, you know, we often see, and we also just kind of are watching day to day what's happening in the email inboxes, um, our own personal email inboxes from bands that we, bands and artists that we like. Um, so yeah, we've got five kind of big mistakes that we see artists making with email marketing here. And I'm pumped to dig into them. And I kind of want to kick us off with the first one here, which, um, may, may or may not come as a surprise to you, uh, if you've been listening to, this show for a while. And that is 
that you we often see artists not giving people a reason to sign up for their email list. Yeah, man. And as we dive into this real quick, something that I'm thinking about from last week's episode was this is this episode is is going to outline things that big artists don't do, but it also ties into last week by saying, here's the advantage that you have as an independent artist over a huge artist. Like you can control everything that we're going to talk about today. It's it's all within the realm of possibility. It's all within the realm of, you know, pretty much just being organized and actually doing it. So that's a, that's a good way to look at it too, is not only is this something that big artists are, and labels are failing to do, it's also something that you can implement tomorrow and start putting a strategy together um, because you control everything yeah. we're gonna talk about here. So- um, Totally, totally. I just love that kind of stuff where, where it's like, okay, great. I can I can actually do this. And, and uh, so I thought that was a good thing to highlight. But yeah, I mean, to Jack's point, number one is that we never, a majority of bigger artists don't give a reason to sign up to their email lists. And it's almost like they're afraid to, I don't know. It, it's, it's in a, you know, maybe afraid is not the right word, but how many times do you see a list from, from a bigger artist or someone on a label that just says, Hey, sign up to get updates and I'll email you at some point, you know, like it's so vague and it's so pointless where if the, if the email said sign up and I'll give you an unreleased track, like that is a, is a bare minimum, I would say in terms of what a good lead magnet is. I don't even know if I would call that a good lead magnet anymore, but for a big artist, if you can, if you see someone offering something for free, then it's a huge kind of shakeup in what the status quo is. Totally. Yeah. And I, I couldn't agree with you more about like the competitive advantage side of things. And, and, you know, to, to your point, like, I think that these are mistakes that we, this mistake in particular is something that not only I see, you know, art, larger artists, like major label artists or indie label artists, um, but often just a lot of artists, <laughs> you know, yeah. indies included, um, kind of falling into this trap. And I think, I think part of the reason is because like, it's something that people, you know, they kind of copycat. Like you see an artist's website and you say like, oh, okay, like, you know, XYZ has, you know, subscribed to my email list for news and updates. And so that means I should do that too. And I think that that kind of, <laughs> there's kind of just been like whisper down the lane, copycat syndrome with, uh, with the bribes that go, you know, really anywhere, but especially on website pages and something that I did just kind of for fun to, uh, to illustrate this point was before we, as we were kind of getting ready to record this episode, um, I actually went and did an audit of about half of the artists on the billboard top 200 right now. Um, so about a hundred artists, I went and looked at their websites, kind of checked out what they had going on, um, online as well. And look to see like, what are they doing to get fans to sign up to their list? And I will, I will be totally honest with you. Like it was alarming how bad it was. Like most, uh, many of the artists that I, I would say probably like, I would say probably like 20%, I was finding like no, nowhere where I could subscribe to their email list. Um, which, you know, that's kind of like, offense number one, like not only are you not giving people a reason to si not sign up or not only giving people a reason to sign up, but they're also not <laughs> even giving people a place to sign up. Um, but, but also what I was really seeing was a lot of what you were saying, Ed, was like, it was, it was all calls to actions, like subscribe for news updates and, you know, special offers. Like that was kind of like the, the three piece language, three piece copy that I was seeing on a lot of these uh, a lot of these landing pages and forms. And why? <laughs> it's alarming, but it's not surprising. I mean, like we've worked with a number of, of big artists at NDX. And I mean, I think every single one of them that we've worked with has come on and, and it's kind of been like, okay, they don't have an email list. And it's not that they don't have people that don't want to be on it, but there's no email list. There's no text list. So it's like, I just think somewhere along the way, like you said, this this message of importance of, of email lists, not only email lists, but having something returning value to your, your fans got lost. And probably because it was, it's not necessarily always a quick financial 
move, you know, like getting people on your email list is very profitable and is a great way to make sales offers and have tripwires and stuff like that. But if you don't know to do it, then it probably just feels like you're just collecting people and not using them. So, I mean, that's where it kind of ties into what you're just saying is like, it's not getting done. And on top of that, it's super, super easy to do. I mean, to set up a good iSeries, which is essentially the, I mean, the bare minimum of, hey, sign up for my list and I'll give you this. That would probably take you what? Maybe two to three hours to draft and put into a, you know, a drip series or an email series. Like it's three emails. It's, It's not a lot of effort. It's just knowing that it needs to be done. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, something that something that I was kind of noticing as I was going through this was, you know, and, and thinking about was it's it's news updates and special offers. Right. And it's presented that way, like sign up for this. It's not even saying like be the first to know about this stuff. And right now, like we're at a time where like social media allows for content to be so instantaneous that it's really not giving people a reason to sign up for email when, when they've got, you know, when they've got your Instagram to look at, when they can check, check out what you've got going on on Facebook or TikTok or wherever, YouTube. Um, when you're disseminating content, especially like Twitter, where you've got like one off kind of, you know, random stream of conscious thought happening for a lot of artists, like fans don't necessarily know what you're even talking about when you say like news, you know, news and updates when it's like, oh, why would I, why would I go to email for updates when I can just follow them and look at their IG stories, you know? So that's like an especially bad bribe right now. (laughs) Yeah, for (laughs) Um, sure. Yeah, it was, it was really interesting. Like, and it kind of, it kind of flies in the face of like, I think, I think that's why a lot of this, at least to me, seems like email marketing is like a set, like a second thought, an afterthought to a lot of people who are building these sites and helping, helping with this kind of marketing is like, it's clearly an afterthought because like, you're probably putting so much focus on like how to keep your fans in the loop on social that like, you're not thinking about, you're not thinking about like, why, why would they want to sign up for news or updates via email if I'm doing all this work on the front end? So anyway, um, that that was one thing that came to my mind. But another thing was like on a lot of these artist sites, I was finding like, and you know, I'm looking at artists like Billie Eilish and um, I think Lady Gaga was on there. And uh, there was a, there was a whole bunch and a lot of these um, like Doja Cat and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of these artists, what I would see is like, you would see the subscribe kind of bar or call to action section on their site. Um, And I'll also say it was oftentimes buried at the very, very bottom of the site. And what I was seeing was like, then there would be a checkbox to like get updates from, you know, X, Y, Z and then get updates from Geffen records or Republic records or universal. No, like I don't want your updates, Republic records. Why would I, as a fan, why would I care about that? Um, it's absolutely, it's, it's absurd to me that that's even put on there as a tack on, um, just like throw that out. Like that is a, that is absolutely an, an absolute no in my mind. Like it just, it goes to show like if I'm a fan scrolling a site and I'm looking for something cool to do, like that's going to come off to me as like, oh, this is like some corporate marketing BS and I don't want anything to do with it. Right. And how easy now is it as somebody that is not in that world as an independent musician to actually come in and offer something of value? You know, like if you're seeing that, oh, okay, this is probably going to some huge label list or I'm going to be getting emails I don't want. And then you see, oh, here's like this, you know, get early access to these three songs that I'm working on, like, and actually talk to me. It's just, such we said this last week, it's such an easy, easy, low barrier to entry on actually having something. And as you grow in your career, it becomes kind of, I guess, the inverse where when you're just starting, your opt-in, your lead magnet, it needs to be creative if you're going to get anybody's attention because you don't have that social proof, I guess, yet. Uh, around like your credibility as an artist, you're just new, you're starting, you know, you don't have that kind of history. So you've got to be creative. You've got to do something like an early access funnel where you give five unreleased songs or an album launch or something like that. And then as you get bigger over time, and like I mentioned, some of these artists that we've worked with, it, it was as simple as, hey, swipe up on our Instagram story 
and get a discount code for an upcoming piece of merch or swipe up on our story and get first access to a new t-shirt coming next week. It's like, boom, 20,000 emails, you know, but that's just to say that big or small, these, these creative off, opt-in offers are not being made and it's a huge hole in, in the music industry that can be positively exploited by independent artists, I think. Yeah, totally. And we've done, you know, tons of episodes on bribes. And if this whole email marketing thing is like unconvincing to you, I'll also link in the show notes to um, an episode we did a few months back now about like just kind of the state of email marketing and why I think it's such a big opportunity um, for artists. You know, some of the some of the stats and statistics of where email is going, some of the stuff in there will probably really surprise you. But something something that I do want to note is like I did catch a handful of like bribes, you know, offers, um, for people to sign up on some of these billboard, you know, artists that I was checking out that, that actually were really good. Um, for example, Metallica on their website, they had, uh, this thing, it was called the sign up for the fifth member club. I think it was called. And, uh, it was really cool. It was basically like a free fan club. Um, a free membership site where they had a bunch of content and, um, you know, behind the scenes stuff and you could get early access to, I believe it was like early access to tickets and there was like links out to their merch and stuff like that. So that was really cool. And granted their opt-in was much bigger than just a name and an email. Like they asked for, I believe like your zip code and your state. They might've even asked for my phone number. Um, I don't recall right now off the top of my head, but I did sign up for it. And I was like, this is a cool bribe. Like for fans that would want to see this, it's it's really, really cool. And, and they would definitely be compelled to, to jump into it. And it was the, it was the core thing that they were asking people to, uh, you know, to sign up for, to, to get their email. There wasn't like other random, you know, sign up for updates or anything like that. So that was one that I thought was really cool. Um, the second one was, a, a singer, Luke Combs. He had a, another sort of similar, um, kind of membership, a uh, fan club type offering that was email. Uh, and that was called the bootleggers membership. Um, and it was basically like you could get, I think it was early access to presale tickets. Um, there was like registration access to meet and greets that he had. I just opened up his website too. The first thing that shows up on Luke Combs website is a pop-up that says, join the bootleggers and get 10% off your next order. Oh, there you go. 10% off, super easy. I mean, that's great. And, it, and it's as simple as there's a pop-up, you show up, it says, hey, here's all, here's all this cool stuff you get, plus you get a discount. And like, it's awesome. I, I would be really curious to see what those two artists, like how they use their email list because I bet they do it well and I bet they make a good amount of revenue from it through different offers, tours, merchandise. Like, so, I mean, good on them. Yeah, totally. I, so those were two two ones that I wanted to just kind of like shout out. So like Luke and and the Metallica gang, if you guys happen to be listening, <laughs> um, good on you. Your your email marketing game is at least strong from the front end. You're at least giving people a reason to sign up. And you know what? Like I have heard people time and time again say things like email marketing is dead or email marketing doesn't work anymore. Email marketing freaking works. You're just not giving it a chance. <laughs> like you're not even giving it like a living, breathing chance to to try to work if you're not giving people a good reason to sign up. So that's number one, um, and I think it's a big one. So I wanted to start with that. I think the second one, um, and I'm curious to hear your take on this, Ed, is not talking directly to your fans. I've signed up for so many lists where like the sign off is like you know team artist name or uh, artist nation or the team. And I just think that that is like super, super cringe. Yeah, it's stupid. If you if you follow through with the uh, thought process from bullet point number one, that's like you want to give something of value to your fans, then number two makes tons of sense. If you're giving, the, giving that something of value to your fans, then it should be coming from you. It shouldn't be coming from your manager or your label or like Jack said, you know, Team X. Like, just send it from yourself. It's not that hard. And if anything, people are gonna like it more. Um, just sign your name, you know, backspace five times, delete the label name, put your name in there, and it's easy. But the importance of that is that 
it creates this one-on-one -on -one, hand to hand conversation where as you're growing, one of the, one of the things that I have seen be the most impactful for grassroots artists and even like, you know, slightly bigger artists when they come on and we work with them. And even for myself, it's like taking the time to talk directly to your fans. And yes, that's on live videos and that's on, you know, posts and whatever else, but it happens most often at shows and remotely via email. And like, just think about this as if you're talking to your friend. Like that's how I always view emails. It's a conversation between me and my friend or somebody I just met who I would like to become friends with. And that's why it's like, okay, always sign your name at the bottom of the email. If you're in a band, you don't have to sign every email, right? Like if I write one, I sign it. If our drummer writes one, he signs it. And it's like this connection. So now people know they're talking to us. They get to, it deepens the relationship with your fans and it really just pays off long-term that when you go to a show, they'll know you. When you post something, they'll know you. If you do a live video, they'll know you. And not only that, you know them as well. So it's, it's talking direct to your fans creates a relationship. It actually creates a baseline for a relationship, I guess I'll say, versus just blind you know, throwing up label name or artist nation or whatever. There's, there's no personal touch there. Yeah, for sure. Like I signed up for, when I was doing this exercise, I signed up for Taylor Swift's list and I actually might've been, I think I'm, I think I'm on her list under a different email as well. Um, but I signed up for her list through her website and I immediately got a thanks. You're on the list email, which is cool. Like something, something came up. Um, but it was like a, you know, a really pretty, you know, graphic only email. And it was signed Taylor Nation, which I know is like her, her PR marketing team, uh, whatever. But like, man, it's disappointing. <laughs> like as a fan, like I would want to get an email, even if, even if I know at the back of my mind, like I know Taylor Swift didn't actually write this or something like that, you know? Um, but getting it from Taylor Nation just feels really cold. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. And I think that there's there's a workaround, right? Like if someone on her team is thinking about this, yes, obviously if Taylor Swift goes and sends an email, you sign up for her list and you get an email that says, you know, sign Taylor. It's like, okay, well, that's not true. She didn't just email me that, right? That, that, that much is obvious. But the workaround there is it doesn't have to be, and we're talking bigger artists, right? Like that email could easily start like, hey, I draft, you know, I wrote this email on this date and I wanted to make sure it was really intentional so, to make sure that all of my new fans, you know, young or old, whoever, got to hear from me directly. So I wrote this letter and yeah, you might be receiving it later, but I actually wrote this, it's from me. And same thing, she's got a packed schedule, but how long, you know, she's a great writer. It, she could write an email in 20 minutes and then now you have this framework Dude, yeah. where it's like, okay, look, it's not from her live, but she did write this and now I'm reading this thing that, that she wrote. So I don't really ever buy the excuse that there's not time to write emails and, you know, probably low priority for her, but how far would that go? She's already so great at fan interaction and like taking care of her fans that that seems like a low hanging piece of fruit. Totally. Yeah. And that's such a good point. Like you can be open and honest and, and very intentional about how you say this kind of stuff. I actually love that. Like being like, Hey, I wrote this email on, you know, February 1st, 2020. And, uh, you know, I was right. I, I made it specifically for fans that are signing up to my email list, fans just like you. Then you can have merge tags and, you know, include personalization in the email. Like I got this email and it didn't even have my freaking name in it. It was like, put, <laughs> I don't care about this pretty graphic email that's clogging up my inbox. Like just have something plain text and have my name in it, please. Yeah. <laughs> like make it feel like it was, it was somewhat personalized. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think, you know, it sounds like the thing that maybe they did well at least was send you something right after you, you joined, which is number three that we're talking about is if you have an email list, I mean, we're nitpicking right on who signs the email and we're not nitpicking. This is important stuff that, you know, needs to be talked about, but on who signs the email, when it's sent, but like at least make sure even if you, all the other check boxes are missed, like send something when somebody signs up. There's so many times that I join an artist list and I get no confirmation email. If I get something, it's a you know block template 
essentially saying like, confirmed, you have joined artist name list, you know? And it's like, it's like, that's the worst. Oh yeah, yeah. Please confirm your subscription. And then once you do, that's it. You get nothing else. Yep. You hear from them about two and a half months when a new tour or a new CD is coming out. And it's like, gosh, there's just, I feel like we we can't even stress enough how easy it is to put together an I intro series that spans a month or two and actually makes people feel like you're talking to them. Like that plus a nurturing email nurturing series, it's so easy. But um, yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta touch base. It's like a rule of thumb when it comes to getting new leads or you know, if you ever do any kind of like sales or stuff like that, which is similar, you know, getting email signups here, it's like creating relationships. It's always like you want to touch base with people as quick as possible. One band I signed up for, I signed up for their list, got the like, you know, confirm your subscription email that was super, like super cold and unpersonalized. And then when I did that, I think it was about like 10 hours later, I got another email and it had no context. It said like, it said like, thank you for joining the list, which was cool. Like, you know, that's great. Or welcome to the list or something like that. Fine. But then when I opened up the email, it was just like, bright colors and pictures of merch and like it just said 15 percent off <laughs> with like a hyperlink and nothing else no other text zero context so like all i did was sign up for their list and i got like this is you know and this is this is the same thing as like if you're whether you're not delivering or you're delivering something really confusing like this was just really confusing i didn't even know what i was supposed to do with that email like yeah i guess i could figure it out but there was no like call to action of like, Hey, you signed up for the list. Here's something special for you. Like nothing like that email won't convert. People are just going to be like, Oh, they're just trying to like pitch me stuff instead of making it, you know, feeling like you're over delivering, um, which is something that's really important to do with these, with these emails that happen automatically when people sign up, especially if you've got a sick bribe, you want to over deliver on that, you know, have somebody get the thing that you promise them and then give a little bit more. Um, yes. And I think that that's really important. Absolutely. That's a great way to, to frame it. Give them what you say you're going to give and then just give more. Like in most instances, it's probably some kind of like download link or discount code or some evergreen asset that it's so easy to just throw in there. Be like, hey, by the way, you got this, but like here is a discount code for my store or here is you know, my upcoming single, a Dropbox link, like just give people more. And how that's going to play out to your user is they sign up, they're excited. Wow. I actually just heard from this person in like a personalized message and whoa, they're giving me more content. It just, you immediately create this, this connection of trust and like you actually care, you know, like it's, it's just so, that's a great way to put it over deliver. Um, And I think as I'm looking at this now, like we've kind of touched on the first three topics that we wanted to cover and we've got two more, but I think if you're listening up to this point, then we've talked a lot about like, oh, bigger artists are doing this or they're not doing this. And like the takeaways here that I just want to quickly like re-underline for for bullet points one, two, and three are have a good bribe and that bribe can be simple. Like we said, it can be access to unreleased songs could be access to an album launch or something like that, but have a bribe and have it on your website in a clear manner. Talk to people directly when they do sign up for your email list. So that means that emails are coming from your name, you're signing them from your name, you're responding to emails when they hit you back. Like if they respond to your welcome email, you respond to them and start a conversation. And then number three, just make sure that when they do sign up, that first email goes out, you know, immediately or within 10 minutes. So one, two, and three, if if you're thinking like, okay, yes, people are doing this wrong, but what do I need to do right? That's it. And this is something that can be set up very easily, you know, over one or two weeks max, I would say, if if you really take your time on it. Yeah, I think that's a great point and like a really solid way to kind of recap like those three mistakes and and sort of how to remedy them or at least how to think about them differently. And you know, you made a good point about like over delivering um, and why it's important. It, it also like preframes people to start to expect to hear from you, which I think is really important. Like it sets the expectation of, oh, this person's actually going to be communicating w- with me, which is the next thing 
the next, <laughs> the fourth mistake that we see artists make with email marketing a lot, uh, and that's letting your list go cold. Um, man, I'm on a ton of email lists at this point. Like I'm a customer of a lot of my favorite bands and I don't get a lot of emails from my favorite bands. And to be honest with you, I wish I wish that I did, you know, I'm on their email list. I did a, I did a, actually a search of my inbox, um, one of my email inboxes before we started recording. And, you know, yes, I'm not at inbox zero and I have a lot of old emails, <laughs> so you can judge me for that. But, <laughs> but it was really helpful for the purpose of this episode. And I found that in a lot of cases, I've never been reached. I, I either have never been reached out to or the amount of time that has gone from like, email to email has been so long as in like we put an album out in like 2018 and then I don't hear anything again you know until like we're putting out another album a year and a half later or we're going on tour in support of xyz or whatever and that is like not that is not the exception like that is the rule like out of all of the lists that I'm on it is wild and it's so sad, like as a fan of somebody, as an artist, if you sign up, you want to hear from them. And when you let your email list go cold, which really is equivalent to not sending any kind of check-ins that are asking for an action from your, your fans. So like Jack said, you know, you're selling a new piece of merch. You've got a new single coming out, a new song coming out that you want people to go pre-save you got a tour coming up, like you're pretty much only emailing when you ask people for something, that's when the list goes cold. And that's just, I mean, I guess I would equate it to like a friend that only texts you when they need money from you or a favor from you, you know, they never want to just hang out. We all have, the, we all have those friends. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I, I, it's just like, you don't answer those texts. You don't want to talk to that person because they're not, actively taking an interest in your life or even like trying to create some kind of relationship or maintain the relationship. And it's like, okay, thanks. You know, no, I'm not going to do that favor for you because when's the last time I talked to you? So that's, I guess the most basic way that I can think to put it, but it's just like, it's so easy. I've sent emails out in the past and we've had clients draft emails before. There's like, Hey, you haven't sent an email in a couple weeks. Can you just put something together that says you appreciate your fans? And they go and they draft a, a heartfelt thing that's just like, hey, you know, I appreciate you being in my, my supporters and like crazy that I'm doing this and like you make it possible. And I'm not asking you for anything today. I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate you listening to the music and grabbing merch when you can and streaming and coming to shows. And like, it just is really a really great feeling. And you sign your name. If you send that email, which I love to do myself because I find myself getting, you know, sentimental from time to time that the I'm able to do music the way that I am. Um, and I know a lot, <laughs> yeah. you know, and I know a lot of, of bands that we work with feel the same way. You'll get so many responses to that. And it's just this heartfelt thing has no ulterior motive. And what that does is that by trying to, by not caring about making some kind of call to action and just treating your fans like like your friends, then that lays the groundwork for when you actually do need something. Oh, you've invested into this relationship. I will grab a CD or I will come see a show. And they tie together. That's why we're always talking about, hey, you need to get a nurturing email series going on because you need to do these check-ins. Um, you know, and the other thing that's kind of like spinning in my head now is that I don't know that there's, I've seen these comments in the in the groups before. I don't really believe that there's, within reason, a thing of too many emails, right? Like if you're sending an email a day, it's probably too much. But I mean, for myself, I would say we send out like, geez, 10 to 14 emails a month, you know? And it's a lot of emails, but they're, this is gonna tie into the last thing, but they're segmented out and they're not all just like buy, 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 stream, stream, stream. There's a lot of like, hey, here's a new video. I, we did this, here's a backstory on it. Or like, yo, this is crazy. Or hey, this is the cool thing's happening. Or like thought you'd like to know this. So it's a mix. So that's where when we say don't let your email list go cold, it's not just send emails. It's send different types of emails, provide value to your fans. So that when you do need something, it's, it's not gonna fall on deaf ears. 
Yeah, and this is where a lot of the storytelling that we kind of talked about in in last week's episode, I think, comes into play. You know, um, because that's such a good that's such a good point that you made about like a lot of artists ask the question of like how many emails is too many emails, and it's like, well, how much could you say? Like, how much how much cool stuff could you talk to your fans about? You know, like that's kind of your threshold. It's not like how many emails is too many just based on some arbitrary idea. Yeah, if you're constantly sending people the same like listen to my music, listen to my music, listen to my music. Like if that's all you're sending, then yeah, like (laughs) all of those are too many. But (laughs) I think like it's exactly that kind of differentiation on your topics and the way that you present the, you know, the message and the copy, all of that comes into play when, when considering, you know, your cadence of email marketing. Yeah. Um, But I think that is a good point. There might not be a, there might not be a threshold of what's too much. Um, it's re- it really just depends on one, like what your fans are used to and two, like how much you really have to say. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I think that kind of segues us into number five, which is segmenting your audience, which is super, super important. And I know you had a couple of thoughts to kick this off, Jack. So I will give you the floor. Yeah. Well, so se- segmenting your audience, like that's one of the biggest opportunities I think that you have with email marketing. Um, as a, you know, as a creative, because you can really speak very, very specifically to fans based on what you know about them. Kind of going back to what you were saying, Ed, like about like, oh, how cool would it be? Like if I was getting emails that showed like that this person knows where I came from or know, you know, knows what I'm about or what, what, what my history has been with them. Well, with email marketing, like you do, you do know you do know their history. If you've got things integrated as they should be, you know you've got your email marketing synced up with your store, um, and you know everything is kind of firing on on all fronts. And you know how people signed up for your list. You know maybe what bribes they signed up for, what they've looked at in the past. You know when you've got that set up, you can really get pretty granular about how you communicate with your fans. And I see so many artists not doing this. You know just blasting out you know, the same email, you know, they're probably still calling it a newsletter at this point (laughs) and just sending out the same kind of generic stuff to everyone and really, really not being specific. And something that we spend a lot of time doing at the agency, especially when it comes to things like sales promotions or launches is crafting messages that are very tailored based on people's history with you. So, I mean, let's go back to Taylor Swift for a second here. Like I said, I'm on her email list twice um, because I'm a customer uh, from something I bought, you know, at some point in time. And I got the same, you and I were talking about this earlier before we started recording Ed, but I got an email from Taylor Swift. I think it was yesterday, uh, about a 72 hour sales promotion that she was running for a signed, uh, vinyl. I think it was. Yeah. Signed CD. Signed CD, signed CD for fearless. Uh, the Taylor's version, I think is, am I remembering correct? That is correct. Yeah. So awesome sending a sales promo email that is like, you know, obviously got me stoked, but I'm a customer and both of those emails were exactly the same. The one to the list that I signed up, you know, kind of as a test to see what was going on. And also the one that I must've signed up for when I bought something. Imagine if I got that email to, you know, my customer email address that was on file and it was a little more personalized and maybe it came 24 hours beforehand to be like, Hey, tomorrow I'm going to be doing this thing but I'm gonna let you in on it, you know, 24 hours early to make sure that you get in on the goods. Like I wanted to make sure that you didn't miss this. That would be super cool. And I would feel like really, really special and really taken care of as a fan. And that is why segmentation can be so powerful. And it's such a big missed opportunity if you're not doing it. And if you got that email, I'm sure everything would be sold out before it even hit the, you know, the, if you got the, the pre-customer email that Jack's talking about, I'm sure that her stuff would sell out before the main drop, so to call it, which then makes everybody in the main drop jealous and then they wanna join the email list and now you're actually talking to people and it builds off the success that she already has, right? She's, you know, she sent that email, she probably made a million plus dollars off of it, which speaks to how good email marketing can be, right? Like, don't under, don't uh, undermine that. But to Jack's point, Segmenting out, like that's a very similar strategy we use when I release stuff or, you know, when we're advising people how to release. It's like 
take your offer, give it to the people who care the most in advance to, and just be authentic. Say, I want to make sure you get this thing. And then you can roll it out to the general public. But I think that whether that is a new song or a, a merchandise item, whatever it is, segmenting is so important. And I honestly am sympathetic and to people that don't have segmentation in their list because it was something that I was not overly, I was concerned with it, but I didn't know how to do it early on. So I just didn't do it. You know, it was one of those situations. And after about two years, you start getting customers coming in. You start trying to make offers for, you know, follow up offers for products that certain people have bought. And it was just a nightmare. It was, it was a disaster. And I think I had to spend about two months going in, exporting CSV files into my email provider, making sure everybody was tagged appropriately so that I could not send somebody an offer for a CD saying, hey, they already bought it, but do you want it again? Like, you don't want to do that. It's a bad look. So if you're just starting out or, you know, if you have a list already, like Jack said, I think the most important thing here is is two things. One, Make sure that your integrations are firing, like he said. You make sure your store's hooked up correctly. If, you know, I use Drip, really easy to integrate with like your Shopify or your WooCommerce. Um, a lot of stores have that. Shopify has the same thing. Um, so, you know, make sure it's integrated. Make sure everybody's getting tagged when they do stuff. If you go to live shows and you collect emails there, make sure that they get some kind of tag that says, "Oh, this person's from Orlando." You know, so that next time you go back, you can hit them up. Just make sure you're keeping things organized as much as possible and then use that going forward. I mean, right now in my email account, I would say I probably have about 50 emails drafted out to go out over the next two months. And we're going out, we're doing a tour, right? And there's 12 to 16 shows on the tour. But I have segmentation in there that's saying, okay, if this person lives in this city, send them this email this email three weeks out and then send them a reminder the week of. And then the day before, say, hey, if you haven't got your tickets yet, here you go. And the language of the emails is different, right? It's not just like this beat you over the head, kind of like we're coming, we're coming, we're coming. There's a little offer for a free CD at the show. And it's like kind of, you know, is a little bit fun. But I have all these different campaigns built out because I have the segmentation in place. And that's one example. Customers, like Jack was saying, you can send follow-up offers to people that maybe don't take a product or people that have taken a product, send them a different offer. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with segmentation, but just actually having that in place is what I think is most important and uh, something that's worth taking the time to get sorted. Well, speaking of taking the time to get it sorted, I think you hit the nail right on the head, Ed, about it being overwhelming or just not knowing how to do it or, you know, it not being the most important thing in your mind. So you leave it to the side. So next week, we're kind of going to dive into that and talk about like email list segmentation, what what you should be looking to do, um, whether you're just getting started and, you know, getting everything, you know, brought into an email marketing uh, platform um, or whether you've been doing this for a long time and you're, you know, kicking around new ideas about how to segment your list differently. That's what we're going to be diving into next week. And I think it's going to be really, really cool. Um, Pumped to give you guys some kind of insights and feedback into the stuff that we do uh, at the agency at NDX and stuff that we recommend to artists all the time. So I'm really looking forward to getting into that kind of going on a deep dive on email marketing segmentation. It was actually a suggestion, uh, a question that we had from one of our listeners. So pumped to get into that next week. But I guess until then, I hope you guys dug this little uh, expose on email marketing and some of the things that we see artists uh, doing, missing out on because they're making these mistakes. And uh, I hope that you kind of take a look at your email marketing and uh, see if you can avoid these in the future. I guess until next time, we'll see you next time, Indies. See you guys. Peace out. <laughs>